Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, UAS regulations are a done deal and AUVSI comments. Parts fly as Southwest Airlines encounters an engine failure. Elon Musk will talk about a mission to Mars. I'm Brie Cross, it's August 30th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. As we reported in our Monday edition of Airborne Unlimited, regulations governing recreational and commercial operations of small unmanned aircraft systems are now in effect, and the reactions are coming in. AUVSI President and CEO Brian Wynn said at a press conference on Monday that with regulations governing civil and commercial operations of unmanned aircraft systems now in effect, more businesses and innovators are poised to take flight and unlock the tremendous economic benefits of the technology. When added that the UAS industry is poised to be one of the fastest growing in American history, AUVSI's economic report has forecasted that the UAS industry will create more than 100,000 jobs and generate more than $82 billion for the economy in the first decade following UAS integration into the national airspace. AUVSI based their predictions of economic impact by analyzing the operations of more than 5,500 UAS-based businesses already approved and functioning under a system of FAA waivers. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, also known as AUVSI, is an international nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting and supporting the unmanned systems and robotics industry through communication, education, and leadership. We at ANN are working closely with AUVSI to keep you updated on all the happenings within this new and dynamic technology. ANN is already in place to bring you all the news from AUVSI's exponential conference being held in the spring of next year. A Southwest Airlines flight from New Orleans to Orlando, Florida made an emergency landing at Pensacola International Airport on Saturday after the airplane suffered an uncontained failure of its left engine. A knowledgeable observer said that the initial photographs provided by various news sources seem to indicate that both the compressor section and turbine section of the left engine failed, causing some of the liberated parts to impact the fuselage. However, no official reports have been received regarding details of the engine failure. The Southwest Airline Pilots Association posted on Twitter, quote, A great job today by our professional pilots. The best safety device is always a well-trained pilot. The aircraft landed safely and no injuries were reported of the crew or its 99 passengers. The NTSB and the FAA are investigating the incident. After the break, Elon Musk has Mars in his sights. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. On the second day of the International Astronautical Congress being held next month in Guadalajara, Mexico, Elon Musk is scheduled to present a special keynote address, making humans a multiplanetary species. Musk has talked in the past about SpaceX rockets journeying to Mars. The planned speech will look at some of the technical challenges that must be overcome to make such a colonization mission possible, according to a report appearing in Scientific American. SpaceX is planning to send an unmanned spacecraft to Mars as soon as 2018. One of the possible goals for the Red Dragon mission may be to deploy hardware on Mars that can manufacture propellant for a return to Earth. In a speech last month, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said that the Raptor engine, which will be test-fired soon, is one of the keys for a Mars mission by the company. She also said that the ability to manufacture propellant for a liftoff from the Martian surface is essential. She added, quote, I need my spaceship back to take more people to Mars. The return trip is free. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. On September 3rd, you'll find CAF Warbirds on parade at the Lancaster Regional Airport in Lancaster, Texas. Event attendees will have the chance to experience the very military aircraft that played a significant role in maintaining America's freedom. CAF Warbirds on parade give you an opportunity to get an up-close look and tour of the vintage World War II, Korean, and Vietnam-era aircraft. 
Now we move on to Marion, Indiana, where they are holding their 26th annual fly-in cruising event. Also being held on September 3rd, this annual event features antique, classic, home-built, ultralight, rotorcraft, and warbird aircraft, as well as vintage cars, trucks, motorcycles, fire trucks, military vehicles, and tractors. There will be some cool airplanes flying, which will also include a Lockheed P-38 Lightning World War II fighter. Air shows as we know them today got their real start in the early days of aviation in Cleveland, Ohio. Now the Cleveland National Air Show continues this legacy on September 3rd through the 5th. The Air Show is an aviation theme park with unique display aircraft, including military, vintage, and commercial planes. And while you're there, you'll be thrilled by the U.S. Navy Blue Angels and lots of other exciting air activities. And our last stop today is the Canadian International Air Show being held September 3rd through the 5th in Toronto. After six decades, the Canadian International Air Show is Canada's largest and longest running aviation display. The list of aerial displays includes the Canadian Forces Snowbirds, the CF-18 National Demo Team, and too much more to list. Even the U.S. Air Force is crossing the border to strut their stuff. After these messages, more debris found from MH370. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Additional wreckage found in the water off the coast of Mozambique is believed to be from Malaysian Airlines MH370, which disappeared more than two years ago. A member of an independent group of experts says the pieces indicate a violent impact with the water. Sport pilots who receive training from a flight instructor that is certified for sport pilot training only are not allowed to apply that training time towards a higher certificate. EAA has commented supporting changes to the rules that will allow this training time to be applicable. Alpha recently recognized the outstanding achievements of 10 distinguished pilots during its 62nd Air Safety Forum. The four-day forum also featured panels of subject matter experts who discussed long-standing and emerging issues in key safety-related areas. Two people were fatally injured Wednesday in a motor glider accident in Telluride, Colorado, according to the San Miguel County Sheriff's Office. It's reported the pilot was the owner and operator of Glide Telluride, which offered glider rides soaring around the region. The Power Egg, the first consumer drone developed by Power Vision Technology, is now available for global pre-order. The company says its egg-shaped design is the industry's first gesture recognition remote control and is an intuitive drone designed for enthusiasts and first-time drone owners. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Discovery of Flight Foundation has announced the commencement of a funding campaign to fully restore the Burgess Wright Model F aircraft that landed on the White House lawn in 1911 for permanent display at Reagan National Airport's historic Terminal A. In the beginning days of powered airplane flight, it was not unusual for stunts such as landing on the White House lawn to be highly applauded and to draw public attention to this fledgling industry. The aircraft designed by the Wright brothers and manufactured under license by Starling Burgess landed on the south lawn of the White House on July 14, 1911. The pilot, Harry Atwood, taxied the aircraft directly up to President Taft, who gave Atwood a commemorative medal in honor of the flight. Provided sufficient funds are raised, the aircraft will be restored by the Wright's experience located in Warrington, Virginia, which has found the aircraft's remaining parts, including the aircraft's original engine. Restoration is expected to be completed within 18 months of reaching funding goals. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.